I'm Insomniac and this is the Seiko SNKN37. Before I get into this review, I'd like to give a big shout out to Jim Barry, who actually sent this watch in to be reviewed. Brand new, he hasn't actually even seen it yet. He has actually sent in quite a few of the watches that I've reviewed recently on the channel, so thank you very much. Let's get into the watch, piece by piece. The case on this piece is very unique. Instead of the common round style of case, you have what I would call a soft square case. It's a square case, but with slightly rounded edges. And when you look at it from the side, you notice that it's slightly rounded in all dimensions, which is pretty cool. It gives you a soft cushion type of look. And this soft square shape is actually highlighted by the brushed top of the case being visually separated from the polished lugs. The sides of the case are also brushed, but you have these cool little polished curved sections on either side of the case, separating the top of the case from the sides. The screw down case back is all polished with an exhibition window so you can see the 7S26 movement in action. One thing I like about this case is how thin it is. It sits low on the wrist and the large diameter of the case actually makes it seem even thinner, so that's interesting. Last you have the crown, which is the right size for this case and has fairly good grip for making adjustments, but it suffers slightly from being a bit too plain. I believe that watch crowns are a great place for a company logo at least. Overall this case is very solid. It won't blow you away, but the shape is unique and the quality of the finishing is very good. I have very mixed feelings about this style. I'll start with what I think is great here. First of all, I do like the fact that under the flat crystal you have a dial that is perfectly round inside an almost square case. It's a cool contrast, but it also flows very well because of the curved design of the case discussed in the last section. This particular model has a beautifully finished deep blue dial which throws many hues of blue depending on the angle of the light hitting the dial at any given time. Anything from denim blues to midnight almost black blues. The dial is a dual level stepped design with an outer section raised above the center. This outer section contains the large cleanly done applied silver numerals and indices for the hours. Then in the lower center portion you have printed indices for the minutes with exaggerated indices for every 5 minute interval. You also have the Seiko name printed under the 12 and automatic printed above the 6. To the left of the 3 o'clock index you have a window that displays both the day and date. From here on is where the dial loses some points in my book. Starting with the only thing I haven't mentioned yet, the hands. Your minute and hour hands are polished well, and they're a decent sword shape, but first of all, they're way too short for the style. Now I see what Seiko is going for here, which is to keep the hands in the sunken lower portion of the dial. But when you have a dial with a diameter this big, hands that small just look way out of place. Then you have the white fillings in these hands. If they were loom fillings, I'd be all for it, but they're not. In fact, all of the white you see on this dial, including inside the straight applied hour indices, none of that's loom. If it is, it's the worst loom ever put on a watch, which we'll get to later in the loom section, because here's the thing. I double checked the website where this watch was purchased, and it says hands and markers under loom filling. So it looks like those white sections are supposed to be loom filling. But I purposely charged the dial multiple times, and even moving quickly to pitch black after the charge, nothing glows. And being that the loom doesn't charge, I would have rather seen solid indices and hands here. Speaking of hands, the second hand lacks any kind of inspiration. The dial overall has a great quality look to it, but the second hand is literally just a long acute triangle. No shape to it whatsoever, not really well polished, the second hand looks like an afterthought. Last we have the issue of contrast. The polished silver indices contrast fairly well against the blue dial, but the gray printed minute markers are really hard to make out unless you're in a bright room or outside during the day. So overall, it's a nice dial with a good quality look to it, but upon closer inspection, it could have been a lot better. You have two usable complications for this piece, the day and the date. They're cleanly laid out, they're a good size on this dial, and they're easy to read. No complaints there. Two very useful complications, well done. Now this is a really sad scenario because as stated in the dial section, I assumed that the white fillings on this dial were just for contrast, so I wasn't going to have a loom score added into the overall score of this piece, but because the website claims that this watch has loom filling, it had to be scored. You can see here in pitch black darkness that the watch isn't legible. 
And this is after using a direct light source to charge the dial for a couple of minutes. Seiko really dropped the ball on this one, or there was a big miscommunication between Seiko and the retailers. Time at a glance on this watch is pretty good. Despite the fact that the hands are far too short, they're all pointed at the end, so they clearly indicate which hour and minutes they're at. Where this section loses a few points is with the contrast of the printed minute indices. In anything less than bright light, the gray printed lines on the dark blue dial really don't show well, which makes telling the exact time to the minute not impossible, but not effortless. Fairly good overall, though. The strap on this piece is one of the best factory straps I have ever seen come in for review with a watch. It's the perfect width for the size of this watch. It has a really great quality thickness to it, yet it isn't too stiff even right out of the box, and the finish is excellent. As opposed to most of the leather strap watches I've reviewed, this one doesn't have an artificial polished look to it, and it's not another faux alligator pattern, it's just a wonderfully subtle textured leather that looks and feels comfortable on the wrist. The free loops hold the excess strap in place perfectly, and the buckle is the perfect size for the strap, with a decent polish and Seiko well engraved into it. Really great strap. Last we have value. The MSRP on this watch is 225 And if you like the funky aesthetic of this watch, it's a mechanical Seiko automatic, and I'd honestly say that the build quality of this piece is far beyond 225 so even at that price, I'd say this is a good value. But as of the time of this review, I saw it on one reputable website for $112.99, so literally about half of MSRP. At that price, there's honestly nothing to consider here outside of do you like the aesthetic of this watch and do you like the size of this watch. For just over $100, you're getting a well-made mechanical watch with great build quality from a very well-known brand. At $112.99, this is a great value. Well, again, thank you very much to Jim Berry for sending this in. A very cool piece. Uh, definitely enjoyed spending some time with it. Speaking of spending time, if you're enjoying spending time here at Should I Time This and enjoying these reviews, I could always use the support over at Patreon. It's the link at the top of the video description. And if you have any watches that you want to send in to be reviewed here on the channel, email me at shoulditimethis at gmail.com. I will tell you where to send the watches in. They will be reviewed, insured, and sent back. Well, I will see you all at the next one.